we talk a lot about the potential to transform society or wanting to transform society. <clears throat> and I, I hear that kind of talk a lot, but it appears to me that attempts to transform society when we really haven't transformed ourselves are always going to be inherently limited because all we're going to do is create a new version of the old status quo. And this work with nonviolent communication, I think, more than many things, really does have the potential to transform society. Because if you can internalize not just nonviolent communication as a technique, but really the attitudes that are what make it so important and successful, if you can internalize those attitudes and really shift <clears throat> towards a nonviolent way of being with other people and a nonviolent way of being with yourself and using these techniques to help kind of move into that space, I think that really does have the potential to be transformative and, I mean, truly transformative. And I think one of the ways that we saw that in our group is that by working together, we interacted in a way, by doing these exercises and techniques and sharing together, we interacted in a way that just doesn't happen anywhere else at this university. In academia, sometimes I feel like we are like dingoes fighting over a carcass, you know. Um, diminishing resources and we almost have this sort of anxiety against each other sort of built into the structure, you know, across departments and so forth. And that's one of the things that I really don't like because mm -hmm. I really like to really believe and feel that I can work with people mm -hmm. as a team. Mm -hmm. And some days I think that, okay, we're doing that, and other days when I look at the budget or something and, you know, I feel like we're fighting each other. Mm -hmm. And um, I think this is a way to kind of really call our attention to um, maybe the, the idea of teamwork more than some of the other structures in the university do and hopefully be complementary in some way um, and also kind of pull on that other part, mm -hmm. which really bothers me some. In other meetings, I'm always a, a bit cautious about sharing anything personal. I, I'll keep it on a very different level. I won't go into anything that I think touches on uh, the real me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll have a, a, person, a persona that, mm -hmm. <laughs> that I present to the rest of the world. And so I, I think I do that, and I think a lot of faculty do that in other meetings. They have their meeting face, and, and so they'll... Uh, they'll certainly express what they're thinking, um, but they're not going to get to a personal level. They're not going to just say, you know, I, like Rosenberg's recommendation that we identify our needs. Mm -hmm. For us to say out loud, this is what I need from the group, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I don't think that would happen. And our culture at Newman is, is pretty good because it's small, we know each other. Well, the goal here, I think, if there was a goal, was to really work with understanding um, the nature of communication and how our communication affects others and how we can be more effective in making our needs known and not just simply try and accomplish a particular task. So a sensitivity to that, whereas typical faculty meeting is business oriented um, and while we might talk about broad ideas, it's, it's always down to well, what do we have to get done? So the goal here was, was more of um, an intentional relating. Um, there's so many things about the group that I liked. I liked the opportunity to relate to colleagues in a new way, in a more kind and gentle way, um, in a way that was focused on process and not just task driven, which was so nice. I loved the introduction to the material. And I'll talk just a, a minute about that. I feel like I'm a communication professor. I've been studying communication for the last, gosh, I don't know, 25 years. And this was a way of thinking about communicating interpersonally that I'd never been introduced to. And so in some ways I almost felt silly uh, <laughs> that, or, or naive or like um, I'd really missed something for the last 25 years of my career that I hadn't thought about communicating and relating to others in this way. I also find it to be the most challenging 
communication concept that I've ever tried. And I feel myself wanting to do this in my personal life more. Might be a good place to start is the, the um, whole idea of trust that developed over time. Because when we started, we came together because we were interested in an idea. But what really happened was the building of relationships where we began opening up things that we wouldn't necessarily share with others. And, and uh, the group became a safe place to do that. And we interacted in a way that just doesn't happen anywhere else at this university, in my experience. And I think we all experience that as transformative. It transformed our relationships with each other. It transformed um, how we felt, I think, about what we were doing with faculty colleagues and staff colleagues. It transformed, I think, how we were thinking about how we relate with our students and some, dealing with some of the issues that come up with students. Uh, and it became a meeting that became personally important to almost all of us, I think, if not all of us. Uh, and something that we actually looked forward to because it was kind of a respite from the normal way of interacting that we have in meetings and kind of carrying on our business. So to me, that was very transformative. From a process or format perspective, I, I loved that time. Sometimes it was so hard to make time and, and get away from my desk to, to go join the group, but it was always relaxing, grounding, um, took me back to really thinking about what's important in my life and just slowed my pace down. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate the way that you structured the experience for us to make sure that we were slowing down mm -hmm. and um, really talking about things that, that matter in our lives and not getting caught up in the silliness of the bureaucracy of the organization. I like the idea of a sort of open circle. So we did, it wasn't that we're all completely, the circle wasn't closed, there was an opening up to, to um, at least some space over that side because there's not benches there. Um, and I think that that open circle is a good, good mm -hmm. uh, metaphor. Um, I think that the passing of the item, the, the ball or the, you know, whatever it may have been that we used at different times, um, drew an attention to a kind of active listening mm -hmm. to the person. Um, and so the typical meeting is, you know, you have people jumping in with their thoughts and, and there's not that patient listening. And I mm -hmm. think that, that it sort of um, required a patient listening to what someone else had to say without feeling the need to respond right away to mm -hmm. it. Uh, and it was kind of freeing because you were also not sitting there thinking, Oh, what do I say to them? You were just listening. And, and that open listening, uh, I think it, it creates room for growth to take place. Mm -hmm. I'll just relate the experience that uh, really touched me. Um, I, I, I think it was the section we were just talking about listening with empathy and um, just trying to understand what the other person is saying and, and not leading the, the person to say what we want them to say, uh, but just really being in tune uh, with, with the message they're trying to give us and, and just taking that in, just, just listening without judgment. And you probably remember this, Marguerite. Um, it was a conversation I had with, with Greg Right. And, and Greg modeled for us as a group um, the, the approach and I was talking about a relationship that I was in and uh, and he just used Rosenberg's model and I found myself opening up a lot more than I had anticipated I was going to I had no intention of being that open with the group uh, even though I felt pretty safe with the group I just thought mm, you know, how much do I really want to, to share? But the technique the, of, of truly listening with empathy, I just felt myself being much more open mm -hmm. and much more willing to, to share mm -hmm. um, what, 
what I had been thinking and what I'd been feeling. So I found it fascinating. I, I think in our group we were really lucky that the, that the people that you had invited and that had expressed interest to be in the group um, were so compatible. I, I felt really connected with uh, with everybody, and I didn't know, uh, like I didn't know Susan that well to begin with. Um, I'd had some interactions with Greg, but I didn't know him very well to begin with. Uh, you and I had had some interactions. I probably felt like I knew you and Sonia more than anybody else. Audrey, I didn't know well. John McCormick, I didn't know well. <laughs> uh, so uh, through this experience, it. Um, I really felt like I got to know these uh, colleagues that were engaged in the process. And, you know, ostensibly we're there to just talk about the book and learn the skills and the strategies, but as we uh, began to incorporate them and try them out on each other, um, you can't help but get to know people in a very different level. One of the great strengths is that it gives you a window of opportunity to actually kind of know your colleagues outside of the everyday onrush of things where you, it, it, it makes you become more conscious that they're real people and mm -hmm. they have, and you can relate to them in that way. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I know some people will form little groups and get to know each other outside of the university, but that doesn't always happen. Mm -hmm. And I really like that it happened here. And in an interesting way, it is a way to forge interdisciplinary collaboration, mm -hmm. which is one of the big things that Newman seems to be talking mm -hmm. about, or you know, various people at Newman seem to be focusing on, and we're all interested in. But to get to that in a real way, mm -hmm. I think people who work together will tend to gravitate towards people they know. Mm -hmm. And this is an opportunity for more people to really get to know and trust mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. so I think it is countercultural mm -hmm. in some really significant ways. Um, I think all of us became even more sensitized to the idea that we live in a fairly violent culture. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that's not overt violence, but just kind of a more subtle violence of not really respecting other people's opinions and feelings and things like that. And I think there's, I don't know if this is ever going to be for everybody, mm -hmm. but it seems like if it had a potential, if it can't succeed at a place like Newman that explicitly adopts those values and to a large degree really I think tries to live them out, then I don't know how much hope there is <laughs> in other places. But at the same time, I think that what this is about is, is really getting in touch with our, just really humanity. Mm -hmm with our humanity and, and connecting with each other at a really human level, which I'd like to think is universal. Mm -hmm. Although I know there's a lot of you know, personal and psychological and institutional obstacles to doing that mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, I'm kind of excited about the experiment though. You know, can we really be human and still function mm -hmm. at an institutional level in a very effective way? I'd like to believe we can. Oh, my.